Hi, 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 it's your girl Monet and you're watching The Exchange Rate, the show that begs the question, how is Monet so fucking beautiful? I know. <laughs> oh, so after last week's episode, I made the joke or said I would research to find out if my cat could be vegan. And bitch, 300 comments later, y'all have uh, been done letting me know that I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> Monet, you stupid bitch, your cat can't be vegan. What is wrong with you, you dumb cunt? Literally, those are comments. Y'all were very shady and y'all really let me have it. And no, I am, now I know that my cat will not be vegan and I apologize, mom, okay? I'm sorry, I'm a human, I make mistakes. But um, even though my cat won't be vegan, I have tumbled with the idea of veganity. But I just don't think it's for me. I, I, last week, I was a little pescatarian. I only had fish, salmon, um, whiting, and um, scrimps. And I think I might be liking that journey for me. It's not completely vegan, but it's on the journey there, too. Because, you know, because of I'm over 30 now. And, you know, like health and skin and just being vegan is, like, better for you. But we'll see. That's a long road. Ago. I like meat. I like fish. I like all the things. Having a vegan lifestyle does help with, with you know, weight, maintenance, and stuff like that. And again, over 30, we want to make sure these things are balanced, that I'm giving all the snatchosity that I can. But I get really bothered when I see celebrities, um, Mr. Robert Pat Patterson, uh, Robert Pantene, Robert Pattinson, Patterson, Robert Pattinson, Rob, there we go. Robert Pattinson was like, you know, it's an epidemic, it's a pandemic, like, you know, whatever, like, don't like get bogged down, like, eat, eat what you want. No, fuck celebrities, y'all don't have, y'all can't tell me eat what I want, all this stuff, because y'all can get, you know, hefty and all your stuff in, 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 in Corona, then afterwards, you're gonna buy a trainer for $3 million a session, and you're gonna get, like, look how you want to look when all of us don't have that luxury. So no, I can't be up in uh, in quarantine eating chips and fried chicken and doing all those things. I need to be balanced and try to maintain a healthy lifestyle because over 30 is hard to lose weight. Am I right, Trixie? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, in Corona, I'm also noticing lots of weird things. The weirdest thing I saw this week is that Snoop Dogg just sat in his car and listened to Let It Go from Frozen. It is one of the strangest things I have witnessed. I don't know why it's so weird, but just thinking like Snoop Dogg going from gin and juice to Let It Go, it is just weird. And I think we're just all going a little crazy, but that's okay. We can all go a little crazy. Just make sure you snap it back before it gets too late. You know what I'm saying? But enough of that. It's another jam-packed show for y'all today with two ever-so-charming Canadians, Dustin Milligan of Shit's Creek and the one and only Miss Jackie Fox. But first, let's get into the king hits! It's another week. Celebrities are doing things. Oh my god, my phone can't recognize me. I'm like, oh, this is beautiful. The first one I want to dive into is The Real Hot Spice of Atlanta. Okay, I have to be honest. Two seasons ago, I was, I mean, I've been obsessed with Housewives of Atlanta for a very, very, very long time. I love, love, love the show. Last season, I fell off of it. I, you know, I think with traveling and everything, I just wasn't keeping up with it. And I was like, ugh. But now we're back at, now this new, the newest season that's out now, I've gotten reinvested in the show. And I spent all of, all of um, quarantine catching up and watching the show. And now they're on the reunions. And girl, this thing is wild. The Housewives of Atlanta, I promise you it is the best season of, of housewives a close second i think is beverly hills and after that will be new york but atlanta is the best so much drama so much shade it is so good so the reunion is happening and of course nene leaks is wild um she's now left the reunion twice the first time nene she just closed her computer because kenya moore confronted her about spreading rumors about um her marriage not being real her marriage to mark daly which that whole situation, Kenya and Mark, it is too much. I want Kenya to stop fucking with Mark. He's rude. He's shady. I get it. She wants to preserve her 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 her, her family because of her daughter Brooklyn. She has with Mark, but he's just toxic. He is mean and nasty to her, and it is not cute. Anyway, besides the point, Nini confronted 
confronted. Nini confronted Kenya about her marriage being fake. I mean, Kenya confronted Nini. Shit. Nini, Kenya, Nini, Kenya. Kenya confronted Nini about her marriage being fake, with, to which Kenya provided receipts of a marriage certificate from St. Lucia. And I, I know what you're thinking. You can fake a, a, marriage, a marriage license from anywhere. No, a representative from St. Lucia who I guess helped officiate their union in St. Lucia came out and like, oh no, this is real. Big up St. Lucia, my uh, my family's home country. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, they came up and like, no, this is completely real. Nini is just, again, making shit up. Nini loves to make things up and then be mad when it all blows up in her face. Like how she said that there was this fake audio call, which in part three of the reunion, Savanda, Shafanda, whatever her name is, we're going to hear from her if there really was this recording of um, someone talking shit about Nini because that's been a whole thing the whole season. So Nini, and then she left this past week because she got mad again that, um, oh no. Then she left the second time because she had a really, really heated argument with Candy. I think Nini's being a punk. Girl, if you want to dish it, sit there and take it. Everyone else is. And with all these, like, crazy arguments, my favorite part is Andy just muting people. So they go like, yeah, because that's what I heard. Because, yeah, close your legs and marry a man. Mute. That shit is so good. I'm like, we need to just do these social distance reunions forever because it is honestly more dramatic. The next big thing was Eva Marcel. Now, I have loved Eva for decades, literally decades, two decades now, because we all know her from Top Model Cycle 3. She was the winner of Cycle 3. You know that um, the spider photo shoot? So good, so iconic. And, uh, you know, she, Eva talked about on the show a lot how her daughter is with her ex-partner, Kevin McCall, and they had a really tumultuous... Um, I, I don't want to say a relationship because she was very vocal saying that it was not a relationship. They were kind of just messing around. So she downplayed their relationship. And she said that they were having fun until she became pregnant. And then she talked about him being really abusive to her, uh, very violent with her. And which, this is all alleged because McCall has denied all of these claims. And then she got super emotional and she just broke down and she walked off camera. And she was like screaming. She's like, I hate talking about him. Ugh, I hate talking about him. And a lot of the fans on Twitter are coming at Eva saying, no, y'all were messing around for two years. Y'all together, were together for two years. It was not just a, a fun thing. I'm like, bitch, I have definitely had fuck buddies longer than two years. Um, Me and... You know who you are. Bitch, we've been fuck buddies for four years now. And we're in our relationship. I, de I damn sure ain't pregnant. At least I don't think. And, you know, like, you people have fuck buddies. Fuck buddies, there's no expiration date or time frame for having a fuck buddy. That's just not how life works. So I completely believe Eva. If this abuse... And also, believe believe victims. Why are we not believing victims? You know what I mean? People are like, oh, I didn't see the black and blues. I didn't see this. That is not your fucking business. So Eva, get him, drag that hoe, and I'm happy that Marley got her name changed and he is no longer... Well, I guess he never will never not be part of because, you know, that's his daughter as well, but I'm happy that she is separated. She's with her new man, and they have their beautiful kids and a beautiful family, and fuck Kevin McCall. He's shady. He nasty. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> and, yeah, also a lot of... Portia is... People are calling her the MVP of this of this reunion because she's had some really good reads. No shade to Eva. I know I love Eva, but she said it looks like Eva's titties are social distancing. I was like, oh, my God. Damn, that is so rude. And then Kenya said to Nini that she looked like a white woman in drag. No shade, Nini, that foundation is not your color, baby. People love getting them fucking Chanel foundations and they're always off. They never work. Bitch, get you a nice mirror on stick, honey, okay? Then you can look like this. Nini's color is a little off and Kenya got her together. Anyway, we're getting Eva Marcel on the show very soon. So we can talk to her all about this right here in my living room. I can't wait. Uh, the next story is Alaskan Willem. Now, if you don't know, Alaskan Willem, they have a podcast called Race Chaser, and they dissect every episode of RuPaul Drag Race from seasons one until current episodes. All stars, everything. And you know, they're two funny, they're two of the biggest stars from Drag Race, and they're very candid. They talk very openly about everything, and fans are not feeling them still talking about Sherry Pie. Um, her name is Emily. She reached out to the host of Race Chaser, saying that, um, what did she say? 
Seems like seems like the dolls are living for Sherry Pine, making it known. It triggers me to hear her getting praise and makes me wonder why Race Chaser is even acknowledging her. Ugh. To which um, Willem in Alaska replied, we're not going to pretend she doesn't exist in the realm of drag race because she does. You know, they've they've been they've made it very clear that they do not condone Sherry's actions, Sherry's behavior, but their point is that their drag race shows still still keeping the show. Like we're still ex I mean, they've edited her out a lot because when I did my episode of the Pit Stop with Bob, from that to when it actually aired, they edited her out. They like they're they're making a conscious decision to edit her out as much as they can. But you guys have to realize this girl was still there, and she did like she you know her getting to her getting to the final. Four, which is fuck that shit is the final three now, but she obviously did things to justify being there. So I think the show is trying their best to 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 phase her out as much as possible. But it's impossible to make her disappear completely. So and so from Will and Alaska's perspective, they're like, so we kind of have to talk about it. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that it's shady that they still mention her? I mean, Bob and I make jokes at Sherry Pie's expense all the time, but we're definitely not. No one is saying she's fierce and she deserves yada yada yada. Everyone is condemning her actions, but. You kind of still have to acknowledge she's there because we're getting, we're seeing the runways and we're seeing things. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and people think that that make that gives Sherry more power. I don't feel that way. I feel like the general consensus by ninety percent of the fandom is that what Sherry did was the most deplorable thing ever. We don't condone her actions, but we kind of have to live with the fact that she's a part of the season. But think, of, imagine how these girls feel. Their entire drag race experience is tainted by Sherry Pie. Imagine how that feels to know that every time people watch your season of Drag Race, from now until the end of time, they will always call it the Sherry Pie season. They will always, like, this This is this is like a stain on their season forever. So if anyone should be mad, those bitches should be mad. Oh, moving on to another uh, convict. I guess no ex-convict because he's, like, home now for the reason. It's Takashi 69 I don't. I have to be honest with y'all. I do not know much about, I feel like he is in, like, just, in a generation, to, like, way after mine. I don't really know all his things. If you don't know, he's the one with the rainbow hair and the big 6 9 tattoo. He was in jail up until, like, I think about a few weeks ago for a really egregious offense. I'm not, I don't remember, I don't quite remember what it was, so let me not, so y'all come in the comments coming at me, but he did something really bad. He went to jail, and uh, he got out, and immediately, like, a few days after he got out, there he was out in Long Island, which he's supposed to be on, like, an undisclosed location because people like people like want this man dead like people he snitched on somebody apparently and allegedly and people do not like this fool like he should be lying low like he's gonna live the rest of his life kind of running from people which is kind of crazy to think about but anyway so the like a few days after he got out what does he do goes on instagram has a big ass shark chain on and like stacks of money y'all stacks and he's like doing something to the camera but this woman saw him out her window and she's like oh my god is that Takashi 69 literally videotaping him recording himself on Instagram on some inception shit anyway that's that, that, that's besides the point he's reigniting his beef with Snoop Dogg and um because of that he might be going right back to jail so in his first moments of freedom Takashi decides to come for Snoop Dogg and allegedly show him having an extra marital affair with um with an insta famous girl Selena Powell he uploaded the video of Snoop kind of dressed his butt with Snoop's, Snoop's ass was out and he was in the same room. They were together. And, you know, if you're looking at this video, yes, it looks incriminating. It looks like Snoop Dogg is doing something that he's not supposed to do. But again, we don't know what the workings of, the, of their marriage. We don't know what their agreements are. Like, that's their business. Um, but, you know, but, but Snoop fans are reporting it because California law states and they make it a crime for any person to intentionally distribute the image of of the intimate body part or body parts of another identifiable person. The California law also says that it is illegal to record a person inside their home without their knowledge. The law makes it also illegal to spread, circulate, or secretly record videos, or secretly record videos to the internet. So in, in every examining of this law, my uh, 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 New Jersey chorus, <laughs> New Jersey choir college degree, uh, education degree, I can decipher that that six nine definitely fucks some shit up, and if he's convicted, he's gonna go right back to jail. Like you're a fool. Like you were this rapper with all this money and this and the other. Why are you trying to ignite beef with Snoop Dogg's old ass? 
who was try- just trying to live his life and listen to Frozen in his car. Like, what an idiot. Ugh. Anyway, I don't want to waste any more time on Takashi 6 9 Snoop Dogg responded and saying that he needs to... Uh, last time he said something, I ain't had time. But today, I got time. You know, Corona. You better get off my line, motherfucker. Go on and do your own shit. You are, you're messing with a dog. Go play with a cat. So Snoop Dogg is not having it. And uh, yeah, Takashi, mind your business, girl. Just be free, lay low, and live your life. Okay? Those are the stories this week. And once again, if you ever have any stories that you want us to cover or you think that we should talk about, tag me on uh, Instagram, also on Twitter, and hashtag XCR, and we'll see what pops up. Woo! I generally don't really fuck with wines. Well, except for every other week when we have another segment from our in-house Somali gay. You get it? Somali gay. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> fuck. Mein Hi everyone, and welcome back to Wine Crush Wednesday. Um, it is my pleasure being with you right now, as I, it's the first time I've been with anyone in weeks. Um, this is the first episode of Wine Crush Wednesday that I have filmed since uh, the government shut down and we have been in quarantine and have been social distancing. And what's different about life now, more than ever, and more so than anything else, is that before, I, I loved to have a nice little cocktail, a little glass of wine, but you know, as uh, Mother Teresa once said, um, hey. <laughs> um, so the reason I'm wearing such a big wig today is because I'm trying to disguise the fact that for the last four weeks, every meal I've had has been noodles and red wine. <laughs> anyway, let's drink more. Listen, I've, I'm a little wined out. I've, I've, today I thought about getting some wine, ordering of course, I would hate to go outside in a pandemic. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I wanted to, um, I wanted to get something. I was like, well, how would I get something that like represents where I am in life right now? Since I have gained 18 pounds in the last five minutes, let's get back on track. So tonight I have my very special friend, Skinny Girl Margarita. Oh my God, do you see the details on this artwork? Do you see the line? Oh my God. Um, so Skinny Girl Margarita was made by like one of the fucking housewife people or whatever the fuck it's called, I don't care. It's a margarita with less calories. And they say that one uh, one serving size is two bottles. Uh, so I only have one, so I don't think I'm gonna get a full serving. But yeah, the first thing we're gonna need for this is a glass. <laughs> okay, uh, the second thing we're gonna need is ice. <laughs> Everybody loves margaritas. But no one wants the guilt or the calories. That's why we created Skinny Girl Margarita, made with natural flavor, blue agave, silver tequila, and lightly sweetened with agave nectar. Skinny Girl Margarita, the margarita you can trust. Okay, first of all, I, <laughs> I should be the spokesmodel for this. Um, oh, is it? This is plastic? It looks like glass. It's glastic. Just a small glass. Okay, now we can taste it. I'm really excited. It's already kind of just reminding me of like a margarita in a wine glass with like maybe like ice in it. Uh, so cheers to, uh, b uh, cheers. There's like noises happening upstairs and I want to guess that it's rearranging the furniture, but I also like low-key know that it's butt sex. If being in one of the most popular shows of this decade was not enough, our first guest has officially charmed his way into our hearts on this season of Celebrity Drag Race. Please help me welcome the delicious Dustin Milligan. Hey! Hello, my dear. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so excited to be here talking on The Exchange with you, Monet. You are absolutely one of my favorite queens of all time. So thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you for being here. You look like you're in a very lovely, sunshiny place. I'm very jealous. Yeah, the Sunshine State, uh, California. It is it is lovely here. Uh, you know, again, like like being in lockdown is, is not the best, but the fact that it's uh, beautiful and sunshiny and that I have the best tan of my entire life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, up in, up in, I mean, Canada gets a lot of sunshine. I will say I've, since you know touring on dragons and stuff i find myself in canada a lot during the winter in like places like saskatoon and edmondson and i'm like i fucking hate the winter why am i here but the people are great but i hate winter 
Yeah, no, in Edmonton, so where I'm from is a town called Yellowknife, which is an 18-hour drive due north of Edmonton. Further north you know? of Edmonton? Way further north than Edmonton. Oh, girl. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, again, that's why it's like, it's so lovely now that I, I sort of built my entire life here in California because it's just a way for me to uh, never experience those winters again. <laughs> now, I have, a, I have a question. This, this is a genuine question. When did you realize that you were a sex symbol? <laughs> to so many people. Uh, wow. I mean, I don't know. Is that is that the case? I, I uh, don't uh... Yes, Ted. I don't know. I guess it depends on what that symbol is. Uh, it, yeah. Is it a, a sex symbol of insecurity? Because then that's accurate. Uh, <laughs> is, is the symbol just a big teardrop? Because that's what happens more often than not in sex. <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, that's, that's, um, uh, as you can tell, it's always weird for me to have this sort of think about. I never, uh, you know, I always wanted to just be funny. The reason I got into to, to, uh, the biz as it is, is just because I want to make people laugh. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's always been my, my goal, but certainly it's been a long journey. And, and I, that's why I think like, I'm so grateful to be working in comedies lately now more than ever. But again, being on, on Drag Race was so incredible because like, I got to actually like show off my chops, prove myself. I know, okay, well, so, how long have you watched Drag Race? Like, have you been a, a, a big fan of the show for a long time, or you kind of just recently got into it? I only got into it, so it would be like uh, uh, like December 2018, January 2019 is when it, mm. it was like, my partner and I, we were just like, what are we going to do? And a friend of hers was like, you should watch Drag, Drag Race. So we're like, all right, we'll get into it. And I had only sort of heard about it, and I love um, puns. I love wordplay, <laughs> I love puns. So Dad jokes, always, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and it's always floating around. I heard this name, Sharon Needles, and I was like, that's so funny uh, to me. Like, that's just such a clever name. And then, of course, when I started watching the show and realized everybody's got a name like <laughs> and, and everybody's so funny and so talented <laughs> and, and had so much heart, it just, like, it swept over me like you wouldn't believe it. Now I am truly obsessed, a, a, a super, super fan. Well, you know, that was one of the ones that it took me a long time to realize. I feel embarrassed to say I did not get that Sharon Needles was Sharon Needles until like maybe three years late. I'm so slow. No, there's and that still happens to me all the time. Like uh, recently, the, the last episode of Celebrity with uh, Madison Beer was Coral Fixation. Oh, it's so good. That is so I didn't good. get it at first. I was like, Coral Fixation? Like, what is... And then someone I was watching was just like, Oral Fixation. And I was like, that's very good. That's good. <laughs> so good. Yeah. So wait, so 2018, that's like All-Star. That, that was like my... That was my All-Star season. Yeah, that, well, actually, so we ended up... I think we watched... Uh, was it All Stars three? Was when Dela did yes, the All yeah, this, three. yeah. So that was the first season of Drag Race we ever watched. Well, that was a good and one. then it just went all out of order, like all over the place. Uh, right. But then we watched uh, yours next, and yeah. then we went back and like started actually going a little bit more in order. But uh, it wasn't until probably, in fact, it wasn't until after I shot uh, my episode of, of Celebrity Drag Race that I. Finally went back and watched the final few seasons that I still had missed. Yeah. Because it's hard to find season one. So say it again? It's hard to find season one. Oh yeah, girl, they don't speak about it. It was horrible. Yeah. They filmed <laughs> on someone's Nokia phone. It was <laughs> terrible. They don't they try to lose it. Um, <laughs> but but let me drag this. I have to say, you did such a great job. And if you weren't loved enough already, people really, really, really loved you on the show because you were just being such a genuine spirit and so kindred and being so kind. And it was just so nice to see uh, uh, you just embrace the femininity of it all and just let yourself have the experience. It was so nice to see. Well, I, I again, I'm such a fan of yours, so I really appreciate that. Especially, you know, I love my Miss Congeniality queen. So it's like even, <laughs> a, even more of a, an honor. Because I think, I think, you know, that, that was the thing for me. I've, I've been on for a very long time, possibly my entire life, this this sort of journey of, of bumping up against, as I talk about in this show, like what traditional masculinity is supposed to be. Yeah. And it wasn't until, you know, I, there was a lot of steps on this journey and I'm sure there's a lot more to go, but it wasn't until watching Drag Race that I finally was just like, like, you know, here are, are these, uh, these beautiful artists, these, these you know, political uh, uh, uh talents that are going out there and being the biggest boldest versions of their yeah. authentic selves 
what the fuck am I waiting on? Like, what, what do I have to worry about? Like, I'm a cis hat white guy who's had so much privilege my entire life. Why, why am I holding back in any way? And so it was really inspiring. The show really inspired me. And, 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 and it just was something where probably the second or third episode in, uh, my partner and I, we were watching and she turned to me and she was just like, you know, you would, you would kill on this show. And I, was like, <laughs> I, you did. I would fucking love to be on this show. <laughs> and it's so wild that this sort of serendipitous uh, series of events actually resulted in me getting on and, and I got to, to live that out and, and, and fulfill and explore that part of me that I, I, knew was there but had yet to actually be formally introduced to yeah and you know i will say because you i think you're a prime example of because you had the incident in 2010 with the gay jokes whatever you're like listen i get it i understand but to take that and to kind of turn toxic masculinity on his head and be like hey listen i made mistakes and i grew from it like was that your goal to show that it is okay for people to grow and change and learn from their mistakes you know, first of all, thank you for bringing that up because it is, it weighs on me so heavily still. Like, just the, the education that I've had, not only since then, but even prior to that, where it's like, you know, I was raised in, in the 90s and early 2000s where, yeah, not only was uh, misogyny and toxic masculinity, like, so prevalent in everything, but, like, homophobia and, yeah. and this idea of a gay joke at all, like, that existed in such prolific uh, ways all over media and pop culture. Yeah, and it wasn't it it wasn't until I really just started listening to you know my mom telling me like you know when I was just like in high school and stuff like you know those gay jokes aren't okay and then as I grew up and you really start to understand the implications of all that and how harmful and hurtful that is even in the the smallest thing that you you say like like there's no reason for it all you're doing is perpetrating ignorance and hate and so again for me to be welcomed onto the show. Uh, it, it was not by any means like it wasn't something I was like planning to do and it was not a part yeah. of any kind of apology tour by any means. It was just like, I was just so grateful to be welcomed into that family and to be, I, I feel like to be shown that I can be loved for being who I am, including all of my mistakes in the past, just like everybody else, which I think is this beautiful thing about uh, not just Drag Race the show, but drag in general. It's like, you know, it's all about love. And what better thing and more important thing do we need in the world right now than just a beaming, like, ray of love shooting out of our TV screens for everybody to uh, hopefully learn something from? People feel your heart and people know, you know what I mean? Like, what you did on Slippery Drag Race, you understand. It was, I mean, I was watching it. I was home tearing up. It was just so good just to see a great representation of what an ally is oh my god that means so much that means so much so okay i have to tell you i was i think on a flight to minneapolis uh um like two years ago when i discovered Shit's greek and my life has never been the same the show is so good and it has taken over pop culture people love the show when did you like realize it was such a phenomenon you know, I think the thing with all of us on the show is like we all just signed on because it's like, hey, you want an opportunity to work with Catherine O'Hara and Eugene Levy? Like, said no, yeah. yeah, yeah, we're absolutely. Again, I've always wanted to be in comedy, so this is just like a dream come true. And and then yeah, it, like most shows in Canada, it's always kind of done with this assumption that you're lucky if Canada's interested in it. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, it's like it's like like Canada got on board, and then and then I think around season. Four was when Netflix picked it up. Uh, no, no, it was on. I mean, I don't know when it was in real life, but I feel like it was shortly after season two. But you, again, you would know way better than me. I'm like, no. Let yeah, me, yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. I know because it's on Pop TV as well, and then and then oh, uh, okay, yeah, you know, everyone's everyone knows that network. Uh, so I think it's one of those things. <laughs> uh, I think it's one of those things where it's like whenever it actually finally hit Netflix was when. Uh, people were able to binge it and really get an appreciation for the show and the voice, I think. And, and it's, it's just one of those things where it's so bizarre. Again, as Canadians, we're never expecting anybody to really get on board with anything we're doing. And then to have it continue to blow. And, and it's weird for a show to, to like pop and then continue popping and getting bigger yeah. and bigger. Usually it has like a little burst and then everyone loses interest. But uh, for us, it's, it's been this incredible thing where people just are, more and more into it as time goes on. Yeah, and now it's going into the final season. And I get it. You you want to end it on a high note. But I'm like, 
Girl, I think I've got at least five more seasons up in that motherfucker. But you I know mean, what? yeah, I think that was the cool thing where like uh, there was there was a lot of talk to just sort of end it in in a concise thing and like have it have it not be something where eventually you lose that audience and that interest and have it be celebrated for what it is in those six seasons. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fan chatter about trying to do a movie or, or like a reunion or something like that. I feel like that's, uh, that's probably not, uh, impossible, but I think, uh, again, we want to ride out all the success of it now. And then once we're all broke and starving and need a paycheck, <laughs> we'll probably like, you know, warm it back up again and, and get back into it. No, also my biggest thing is that on season one, and you can tell me the, the tea on this, I feel like to make you seem unattractive, they had you in like dowdy clothes. And I feel like they had like a gray filter on you. And then you popped out in season two. And I literally, you look like, you know, you know, Hercules, the the, the, the cartoon movie when he gets his God strength, and he's like gold. I was like, that's literally what happened to you in season two. You just became like glimmered. You were like a fucking Twilight character. No, I think that's just what the air looks like in Canada. And, <laughs> and they actually started getting better filters to put in front of the camera to make me look better. Uh, yeah, no, it was a thing where it's like again, I was grateful for it because for me, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I all I want to do is just sort of make people laugh, and and uh, it was, it was great to be cast in a role where it's like that was sort of the job. I was playing the straight man, but it was also like it wasn't about, uh, you know, taking off my shirt or something like that right. until later in the show, and then that became part of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was. Uh, Dustin, you are, you are great. You are, I know you're Canadian, but I feel like you could be, you definitely are an American sweetheart because we, uh, the, the, uh, the kids, the people, the girls, the, the men, the boys, everyone, we love you. You're great. I mean, that, that, again, I, I am so, so honored to, to have you say that. I mean, I, 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 I love you so much. I, I love the exchange, uh, right? And no, I'm a big fan of yours. If, if I was one of the mentors, would you have chosen me to be your mentor? This is the thing, like, I, I, so luckily, so, so okay, so I love Nina. I oh, love this Nina. sounds shady. He's like, no, no it's not about, it's not about being shady. It is because if you, and if, like, Alyssa, and, and, like, there's, I, honestly, I hadn't yet seen Bob and Kinchy's season when we filmed. Oh, okay. And so it was just, it was, for me, it was like, not only do I love Nina, her, her heart, uh, her big, big heart, and her, her big, big and her hand. And her really big hands, and yeah. her really big hands, <laughs> Uh -huh. But but I hadn't yet seen uh, uh, Bob and Kinchy season, so it was an easy one for me. But honestly, if you had been there and like Monique, oh my god, I would have like that would have been <laughs> extremely Dang! difficult for me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it would have been so so hard to do. Um, but again, I just I I, I think that's uh, I think that's the magic of the show is that you know you have so many favorites. It's like you guys you need to come up with like trading cards. Oh you know my what god, I mean? like, they should. Okay. Like, like, <laughs> Fuck Pokemon Go, Drag Race Go. Yeah, like, exactly, Pokemon. exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's oh like, my god, like Pokemon, they're like 150 of us. That is yeah, so yeah, awesome. yeah. You can call it like like Tuckerman Go or something like that. Like you know what I mean? Like just. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh my God, Dustin! Thank you so much for chatting with me. Good luck with uh, with 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 all. Hopefully, this the Shit's Creek movie and some other things. I'm gonna pray and light a candle about it tonight in Jesus' thank name. You. Thank you. Thank and um, I saw that Instagram video of you walking in heels. I give you a solid eight and a half out of ten. Wow, that's also the size I am in women's heels. So <laughs> that's that's weird that you would throw that out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dustin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tell your partner I said, hey, girl. I will. Thank you very much, Monet. All right. Bye. Bye. Food, glorious food. No, it's not just the lyrics from Oliver Twist. It's also what I find myself saying every time I cook with Jacqueline Hyde. That and can I have some more, please? Take a look. Trust me, I am ready to handle this meat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope this beef is uncut. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm nervous. What kind of beef did you get? Honey, I got grade A Kobe beef, honey. No, you did not. At that grocery no, store you're always complaining about? You're right. No, I did not. But that, this is like 80% sirloin, some bullshit like that. We have a nice fatty meat, you know? I heard that there's really good um, fatty beef on Craigslist. I think they shut <laughs> that page down. That used to be where I peddled mine. <laughs>
We need a pound of beef or however much you're using. So we're just doing a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce, so Worcestershire, Worcestershire, so Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce. We're doing mustard, onion, garlic, egg, dill. That's it. My dill don't look like that. What's the deal with that? This is fresh dill, honey. Mine's sad. I am gonna start with the onion because it's my least favorite part. My beef is uncut, but my onions are cut. A nice Jewish onion. So I'm lighting a candle and that will burn the sulfur. I shouldn't cry. I'm getting a candle. I always wonder how they make actors cry in movies. Kerry Washington should cry for anything. She's Do you ever bitch. watch Scandal? Oh, bitch. Oh. You, you think I just turned black yesterday? Oh, this smells like perfume. I'm gonna mince my garlic. Ingenuity, mince garlic from the Iberia Peninsula. It's sickening, girl. Where the hell is Iberia? What do you mean where is like, well, bitch, it's where Liberia is at. Oh, Liberia. I thought you said Iberia. I was like, what the hell is that? Oh, it is. I, Iberia is where Liberia is at. It is? I. Yes, Iberia lies next to Iberia. Liberia. And are they know. anywhere near Siberia? Garlic also makes your stuff taste good, like your ejaculate fluids. It does? I can't imagine it that's does. true. If I'm sucking a dick, I'm exactly where I want to be. I will not be sharing this episode with my grandmother. Listen, let me tell you something. Your grandma's probably sucked a dick in her life, all right? That's just real. Everybody she, grandma Oh has. my it's god, I would never even thought about that. Yes, same with mine. Same with yours, and yours, and yours, and yours. I added a little Worcestershire sauce too. I don't know why that word bugs me so much. Here we go. We're mixing it until it comes to a nice, like, sticky ball. Jacqueline, you know I have fisted someone before, and this is a very familiar feeling for me. Chefs are obsessed with fucking cast iron. You are so proud too, she was like, and look what I have, guys. All right. Look what I have. Marshall's $10.95. I can get my pan nice and preheated, correct? Yeah, and a little oil on there. Do you like blue cheese? I like sharp white cheddar. Am I your type? <laughs> you're going to flatten it, and you're going to make a little indentation in the middle. That way they don't get all bulbous. Those fuckers got fucking elephantitis. I'm adding a little salt to the top of these. Oh, I love my, my top salted as well. Let it sit there for like five minutes. Lazy bottoms, these burgers. This, okay, I'm not even saying this because this bitch is here. This smells very good. <laughs> if you make these, tag us on uh, Instagram, Instagram story. Well, then you know what? For your courtesy, we're going to put Jacqueline's Instagram right here. Ooh. I put all four of mine in the pan. Bitch, it's crowded in here, girl. This fucking pan look, look like the Amistad, too, okay? I'm using Ezekiel bread for mine. Show me the bread. I'm sad. I done flipped these damn burgers like 18 times now. They're gonna be black. Oh, and what's wrong with that, Jacqueline? Well, you said you're a burger what's connoisseur. What's wrong with that, Jacqueline? What's wrong oh. with the black burger, Jacqueline? Every time. Ow! A fucking onion fucking ricocheted and hit me on my goddamn knuckle. The amount of shrapnel in your kitchen is terrifying to me. What's the deal with the dill? <laughs> I added the dill to the meat. When? I think we covered that. No, we did not. Roll the footage. You know what? Honestly, Jacqueline, I'm serious. This is this is a, just a deal breaker for me. I can't I can't <laughs> do this anymore. Oh my god, are you done? This is the first time you've ever finished before me. I just want to, I want to know that. I'm not mad you know at what? what I'm saying. It's because I'm a generous lover. Jacqueline, this was so fun. Um, thank you for uh, uh, this lovely burger recipe. I can't wait to taste it. Oh, that deal tastes net. Uh uh. I always swallow, and this, this is the first time I spit it in my life, honey. Grandma, I'm very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, she's not. All right, my dear, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Yeah, I'll talk to you later, babe. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs>
Um, you know, the internet, this is all I do is I just shop online and uh, sit on my couch and um, here I am. I love that you're giving me like power businesswoman. I feel like you own 18 companies. Well, I do. I do own 18 companies, uh, and I and I and I own this pussycat wig I wore just for you. <laughs> I love I love the quaff. She has movement. She looks she looks great. Um, you know who actually told me? Because I used to just plop these pussycat wigs on my head from time to time. Keisha one day just snatched it off my head and said, <laughs> "No, this is not how we do this." So she helped okay. me stir them up. Can I just say you were so smart for these fucking glasses? I they sell out instantly, and there's people love that. How did you? Uh... Well, okay, I I got lucky in that I was able to when I got back from the show, and then the first thing that came out with my interview look, people were like, "Those glasses, those glasses," and I was like, "I yeah. still had them in my apartment," and so I was able to like find the manufacturer, and we started selling them. And these are the new colors for summer. I'm rocking the black ink color. Word, girl. They're very, very cute. So, Jackie, I keep on calling you Jacqueline because, especially right now, I just feel like you give me more Jacqueline energy. Uh, that's true. Well, and my, my entrance look did say Jacqueline across the chest. So, that is totes a props. Oh, I can get my Jacqueline for you. What? Th th that's what it said on the front? It did. It's so my, my, my entrance look said Jacqueline and Farsi across the front. Ooh, okay. So you see, I knew that. It's a full circle connectivity moment. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so Jack, I have to say, like in New York City, I like, like obviously you're a talented queen and it, it didn't seem like drag or something that was like on your radar because you were doing your shows at the beach, man. Like you were doing your own thing. So when I heard you were cast, I was like, oh shit, I didn't even think Jackie ever wanted to be on Drag Race. Uh, well, it's not that I never wanted to be. I never thought... I could be, and then I never thought maybe I should be. <laughs> and finally, this year I was like, why not? And also, I love what I was doing with my drag, and you know, yeah. doing shows at the beach room was so cool, but I was like, how do I do shows like this for more people? How do I share my drag yeah. around the world? And I thought this was a great chance for me to do that. So I just kind of did it on a whim, uh, and here I am. <laughs> And for someone who would think that they wouldn't pay off, girl, look at you. You made it to the top five. That's like not Honey. a thing most girls can say. Uh, not most girls, but some girls. Some, but not most, bitch. Not most. <laughs> and you made it so far with no challenge wins, Jackie. And now I, have to, I am very gagged because for a Snatch Game, I did the pit stop with Bob. And I was like, oh, Jackie should have won Snatch Game the house down. What is your What are your honest feelings about it? Um, well, my honest feelings are that Gigi was so funny and mm. that's the name of the game is I think we think of Snatch Game as like a celebrity impersonation challenge, but I think Rue just really wants to have a good time. And I think Gigi made Rue laugh the most. Um, so that's what I think clinched it for her. But, uh, you know, I, I'm still happy with how I did. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I think Lisa Rinna is such a fun uh celebrity and uh she's been amazing since the show so i, I have no regrets with the my snatch game and then going into the uh the political challenge and obviously i'm sure you've been taught asked this question and talked about it so much already but with the jeff goldblum thing uh in the moment was it as intense as we felt watching it it was intense not because you know people have asked me like oh do you think jeff was trying to like insult you i don't think that i think you know but my my feeling was just okay this is my chance to really stand up for what i think this outfit represents and mm -hmm. hopefully shed some light on that so for me it was just a, a moment of a lot of pressure to not screw this moment up when i could actually right. hopefully um you know enlighten some hearts and minds uh and i'm glad it's opened up a conversation yeah, one hundred percent. And and something you pointed out, um, and I was reading some of your responses to it, is that people love to love to throw those daggers at Islam. I'm like, bitch, all these religions, Catholicism, Christianity, they all are shady to women and queer people. So why is well, I, I was confused as to why he chose that. Well, I guess obviously because of what you were wearing and your heritage and stuff like that. But it's like, girl, look at all these religions; they're all fucked up. 
Sure. And I think, you know, what I really wanted to talk about was more like personal freedom of expression yeah. with this outfit, which is something that unfortunately I think is sometimes in danger in this country, right? We're supposed to be living in America where it's founded on all these freedoms. And yet I know all of us in different ways can feel like those freedoms are threatened or are you know, our safety is threatened if we actually choose to express who we are. And so that's kind of what I wanted to stand up for and say, no, if you are proud of your faith or proud of your culture, like say it loud and proud. Love that. And so now I, talk to me about your genealogy. Okay, so your family is Persian and you lived in Canada. What age did you come to New York? Yeah, so I, my mom is Persian. My mom's yeah, from mom Iran. My mom moved here um, around the time of the revolution in Iran, uh, which was in the late 70s. Um, my dad and his whole family are Canadian. So uh, oh, my parents met in Canada. Um, and I only lived there when I was very young. Um, and then I just go back in the summertime to visit my relatives in Toronto and British Columbia. Um, but I've lived kind of all over the United States for most of my childhood because I followed my mom around to different um, hospitals and um, universities where she was doing medical research. Um, okay. so I was kind of a medical research brat, if you will. <laughs> um, and I didn't. I moved to New York for the first time in 2010. Um, oh, okay. and I lived oh, so you've been here for a while. As well, in between there. But I've been here on and off for the last 10 years. Work, 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 work. Yeah. Okay. So as we know we had Dustin uh, Milligan on the show. Maybe maybe we can get you in the Schicks Creek movie. Would you be into that? Um, very available. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, gosh, what an attractive cast. I mean, <laughs> you right. mean Daniel, Dustin, please call me. I mean, I also love, of course, of course, of course. We we cannot forget Moira and Alexis are no, incredible. No, They're no. It's an amazing. Amazing group. I mean, Catherine O'Hara is a Canadian icon. Iconic. So, have you? Has your mom watched your show? Has she had any opinions, good or good, bad, or indifferent? I think, like every mom, she has a lot of opinions. Um, <laughs> and I think you'll see some of that uh, this Friday um, on the reunion. You'll see some um, some answers to some of those questions that honestly I've had for my whole life. Um, so uh, I'm. Uh, uh, I, I'm highly anticipating uh, what everyone will see on Friday. Oh, and now this reunion, I don't want no sock hop. Oh yeah, kumbaya, we don't love you. I want some, some good shit. You'll have to see what happens. Um, <laughs> I'll say this. I think our cast is really uniquely bonded. I mean, we felt very close throughout filming the season, but I yeah. think with a lot of the events that happened around the season, especially this pandemic, it's kind of brought us together because we really, you know, I think normally they say like, the only people who understand what you're going through are other Drag Race girls, which is true. But then the only people who really understand what it's like to get on Drag Race and have this whole Girl. crazy moment happen to you and then be locked in your house for 12 weeks. It's just <laughs> our cast. Um, so we've definitely been, uh, leaning on each other and trying to support each other through this uh just very weird time very weird time but uh you'll have to see what um dirt is dug up at the reunion well you know a lot of people are like oh i had heard rumors that in the reunion they're announcing that jackie's going to the finales that i gotta gotta so who knows what's gonna happen i'm excited to see what what cards might come out uh yeah stay tuned i mean uh I've heard a lot, a lot of different things. Um, and I will neither confirm nor deny any of them because I can't by law. <laughs> <laughs> so you agree, Trixie's a fucking bitch. Great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is one of the biggest disappointments for you from the show? I think my biggest disappointment was the um, Madonna musical because I mean, mm. you know me, like I like to sing and dance a little, but that yeah. was the one where I just, that whole challenge got away from me. The song was completely out of my vocal range. Um, you know, I didn't really clue into the sexiness that I know Michelle especially was looking for. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I was so glad I got this chance in this musical, this Vegas musical to like, kind of have a little redemption on both the yeah. singing and the dancing front for Jamal. 
when when Jamal said I brought a little bit of sauce, I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh, thank God, Jackie, you are so crazy. The jiggle <laughs> around the world. The jiggle. Listen, as, as Monique Hart said, at least I wiggled. That was her claim to show. Whatever happened, at least she wiggled as she did her do. <laughs> oh, so before you go, I do. I, I've been asking all the girls this question, you know, especially with what you guys are going through and being out at home. I guess you guys have a lot of time to think. What do you think your stamp on drag slash drag race is going to be? Like, you look at the Lady Bunnies and you know what they do. You look at the Alyssa. It's like, what is the Jackie Cox handprint on drag race? Drag. I think, well, I think what I did this season, and I'm so happy that I did it, was I hopefully was able to bring to life some serious things that are happening in this country that affect queer people and Middle Eastern people and talk about them and express them in my drag. And at the same time, remind everyone that like, although those things are important and serious, they can still coexist with like fun and camp and ridiculousness. Um, and I think that that's something uh, drag is one of those unique art forms that can toe that line between the absurd and the super important. Um, yeah. And so hopefully I was able to somehow find my way in the middle of that. Uh, and if not, at least I was a cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I, that's what I love because I think people forget that drag, innately drag is a political statement. Like when, when you get dressed in your apartment in the Bronx, in, in, in Harlem, in Hell's Kitchen, wherever you live, and you walk out of your apartment, you are making a statement, a political statement. So I love the fact that you didn't shy away from that and you were just, you, you were being real about the politics of drag. But also the fun of it. So it was really good to see. Thanks, Monet. Of course, my dear. It's a pleasure having you. Good luck at the reunion. Good luck at the finale. You're not gonna say nothing, shady bitch. Um, thank you so much for being a guest here today, my dear. Anytime you want me, I am here for you. Um, I will need my Monet exchanged immediately after this show. <laughs> Denied. Be love, be safe, and wash your hands, girl. You, you know I will. <laughs> All I right. love you. Love you, babe. Mwah. <laughs> That's it, y'all. Another show in the bucket. Doesn't it fly so quickly? I feel like we like just got started. Before I go, I want to shout out the amazing women who work on the exchange rate. They're great and they're fierce and I love them. Shout out to Savannah DeMaru, Courtney Soliday, Samantha Bow, Brianna Randall, and Bridget Lopez. Thank you all so much for your hard work. Literally, a lot of them from day one, they've been working super hard on the show and I really, 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 really appreciate it. That's it. Don't forget to wash your hands, soak your feet, and remember to always keep your currency in check. <laughs>